Hello and welcome to Station Ears. This is episode two of the Mars playthrough and I just remembered that I didn't pick up the ore scanner when I went mining the last time so I've come back to pick that up and go back down the hill again. Now I mentioned a couple of times in the previous episode about the sun on the hill and then I realized I didn't actually go and elaborate on that at all. Um, the sun comes up obviously on the horizon and if you're on a hill you get the sun earlier than if you're in a valley. If you're in the valley you'll get occluded by, um, shadowed by the hills and obviously that's not a good thing for getting solar and at the moment the only thing we have is solar now. There are wind turbines in the game, they do require a bit more advanced alloys than the solar panels I believe, I'm not entirely sure on that. Um, but they, 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 it depends on the atmosphere. Now they work great in a solar in a in a storm, in a windstorm. Uh, but mm, yeah, on a windy planet, great. On Mars, they 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 work. They give you some power. I just haven't got around to putting them in. So, and this thing is the ground penetrating scanner. It's a really useful tool. Now I'm struggling to try and find it to sit properly. You don't have to actually turn it off in between scans. It doesn't use any power when it's not scanning, I found out. So then you use the ore scanner cartridge in the atmosphere and like uh, not the in the in the in the in the tablet. So you load the cartridge and it basically shows you where ores are. Now later on it'll be coloured coded. To begin with the one you get to start with is just it's all blue which is really useful because you can't see any of that stuff from the surface so let's have a look let's go mine and see what's in there shall we now you do get better miners as time goes on the mo the early the early game it's grinding to pick up all these ores mainly because the drill is so slow it's so annoyingly slow um by comparison so you know, it, it, but it is what it's, it is what it says on the tin. It's the early game grind. Um, most games do start slowly, and there's not really much you can do to avoid it. So it's a good keep checking the scanner and make sure you're not going off in the wrong direction, and then you can readjust where you're drilling to get back on course from there. So at the moment, we're getting lots of lovely iron, which We've, you need. Lo it's a good thing that iron's plentiful because you need lots of it. Is all I'm gonna say. Now this is probably what we're gonna speed up in later episodes, or even cut out altogether. And like I said in the last episode, I haven't quite. Un I haven't quite decided whether I want to just skip it completely or just skip through it. Um, I guess I'll figure that out as I go, unless there's an outcry in the comments one way or the other. So... Now, I am starting to use the OBS software rather than the Streamlabs software, which does mean I can actually pause the recording. So it might come to the point where I don't even bother recording things that I don't think are interesting, and I just pause and unpause when it gets to the next thing so I might go out mining pause the footage and then I don't have to do so much editing but um that's definitely going to be for some of my other series like Timberborn I'm I'm pretty sure the next one is going to be a edited series not like the let's play that we are doing it'll be more of a okay well we're at this point in the in the drought or in the whatever's going on and I might just do the same thing for this I don't know like I, I I'm I want to do things that interest people and I think sitting around watching mining is probably not the most interesting now if you've never seen it before to begin with yes one time two times you've seen how the ore scanner works and you get an idea for the techniques of how to, to mine um, but once you've got the basics, especially if you're not going to play the game, 
it is what it is. Like I like getting high and flying around to be able to see where I'm going. But then I also, it's quicker to run than it is to fly when, until you've got the more advanced backpack. Once you've got the more advanced backpack, you can fly a lot faster than you can run. Now, that does require very late, well, I say late game advanced uh, alloys which come with the tier, with the advanced smelter, which I'm very close to building in, I'd say, two episodes from here, give or take. Now I'm trying my best to go back and annotate, if that's the right word, voiceover, create the previous footage I've got. Now, as you can imagine, if it's an hour's footage, I've spent an hour to make it within the game. Now I'm having to spend an hour voicing over it. So that's not sustainable, which is why I think jump cuts might be the way forward or even just fast forwarding through the mining process. Um, either either which way, I don't, I don't know. I don't care which is better. Uh, as I say, like I know two YouTubers who are play who play this game, and I watch both of them with great interest. Uh, one of them is Cows Are Evil. Now, if you want to know about the programming side, the MIP side of this, that's the guy you you want to go and watch because he explains things so well. Uh, this is just a like a really basic playthrough introduction i will be getting into some programming and automation later on but it's going to be basic stuff and any advanced stuff i do i'm probably going to get from the workshop because i i'm not a programmer like i've actually learned a lot about basic programming from this game oh look cobalt um like i i start i picked this up at the same time i was learning how to program an arduino in a course I was doing, which, you know, very, very similar programming language. This does use something called MIPS, which is an actually industry-used programming language within HVAC and water-based systems. So, you know, if you're a young person who wants to get into programming, or you're someone who knows a young person that wants to get into programming, this could actually be a really good game to get them into because well we all know how young people and old people both get their heads into games and stick them in and keep them in for sometimes too long we can all testify to that so now I'm just making when what I was doing there was looking and making sure I knew the direction of my home base so when you're out mining you've got the there's a compass there in the external portion next to the portrait in the bottom right hand corner of the screen it's a good idea to keep an idea of where your base is or your emergency hidey hole vehicle whatever it is that you're anchored to because in, in most of these survival type games you're anchored to somewhere you can't but you're anchored to begin with, you're anchored to the the lander, and then you're anchored to the base, and then you might be anchored to the vehicle that you make, then you might be anchored to your expansion base or whatever. But there's always something you're anchored to in order to get back to where you gotta go. Now I'm confident that my base is in the direction of 170-ish. And I can see the silhouette there on the horizon, so I know my water hydration is getting low. It's time to bunny hop home, because bunny hopping, you go at four meters a second. Walking, you go at three meters a second. I think flying, you also go at three meters a second, so... At this point in the game, jumping's actually faster. And that happens to apply to satisfactory as well and you can even crouch jump in satisfactory you go even higher now running up the hill i just fought kate bush then um you're going at two meters a second which is not good so you go back to the jetpack and you go back at three meters a second so yeah there's there's options there's always options so and now we're locking ourselves in the room 
swapping out the battery because the battery is low. Now the reason I shut that door sometimes... Am I going to shut the door this time? I am. Is because it basically clears the air out of the room faster in a single cell than it does in a double cell. That square that you're seeing that we're standing in right now, that's considered a cell, one game cell. And, well, things to do with atmosphere work better when it's only one. Now, I left that on there. I didn't have to leave that on. It would let out what was in the pipe, and it wouldn't let out any more. I drank everything I needed to drink, and then ate what I needed to eat, closed my lid, and then suck it all back in. Now, airlocks can be automated in the future. I also then opened the waste tank just to get that rid of that, and... Jobs are good. Now, going back into this room, which had a bit of atmosphere in, but we don't care anymore. I'm trying now to get back to the oxygen port, which I'm struggling with, but I think I found it. Well, I think I found it, and then, <laughs> and then I dropped the air tank, which is never a good idea. Um, the air tank is critical, yes, I agree with you. Although that's not what they mean. They're saying the air tank is critically low. I'm saying, well, the air tank is a critical piece of equipment. Yes, I agree. Anyway, air tank critical. that short amount of time there fills the air tank up to whatever pressure it can from that container, which is a handy little use of that container. Now, I hope I closed the door behind me there. I'm pretty sure I did. Oh, no, I didn't have to. That's right. Right, so we got some more, and... I didn't turn that off, I forgot to turn that off, so we're now going to smelt, which... The batteries are not going to like that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Now, I'm just having a quick look through all the available things, just to remind myself and give myself that bit of a... thing. I, 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 I know I want walls and frames and stuff like that because I want to start, well at this point I want to start building the greenhouse it is the next important thing so over here behind, directly behind the room that we've, the little paddock room that we've got going to start building out the base. Now, in the past I've done it three by three. This time I, I feel like I want a bit of extra space for breathing room, so I'm going to do a four by four. And I'm using these iron frames primarily for the flooring at the moment. I'm going to switch to steel because just it, it's more efficient than iron. It sounds like a waste because you're using an alloy, but with the stuff that goes into it, it actually works out cheaper. Now, I know I'm going to need more frames, so it's time to whack some frames on. Oh, I, I, I guess there I'm thinking, well, I'm too low on energy to to start the printer again. Again, I'm, I'm retrospectively... Yep, there we go. Now are we going to need some blast, uh, sheets, iron sheets, that's the one. I'm trying to retrospectively remember what was going on. But it's not that difficult to remember. Because this is the fourth or fifth time I've played through any playthrough on this, so... Hmm. It, it, it becomes, uh... What's the word? Not routine, but... You start to get into the swing of the game. Now, I picked this up on live stream for the first time after about six months there, not very long ago. Um, 
about four days ago, five days ago, and I tell you, I was completely embarrassed because I couldn't even remember the C button was the button that you... I changed it in fairness, but I couldn't, I couldn't remember what buttons <laughs> did what. So, yeah, I, I, I was doing very badly, I'm not going to lie. So, here we're making the floor airtight. Now, the first time you put one of these frames, I didn't quite explain this in the last episode for people who don't know. The first frame you put in makes it solid tight, so anything on top of it, even though it's got a great big hole in it, visually, you can still put an oar on there and it won't actually fall through, but you can walk on there, you won't fall through. But it will still let the atmosphere through until you make it solid grey like that. And that applies to all the frames. Now, walls are different. You put the walls up first and then you put the uh, sheets on. on sep And then the sheets make it airtight. But they're not as strong as the frames. The frames, I think, are very hardy by comparison to walls. But I prefer building with the frames, even though it costs more. Just because they're more... Well, they're... Uh, what's the way to put it? When you use walls, you invite... Um, difficulties with running certain utilities, let's say. It can just be a bit more difficult. Now, the sun's coming up on the horizon there. Now, if we were down in the valley, the sun would not be coming up right now. And you can actually see that in I, 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 some gameplay. I don't know if they're on this, these episodes, but you can see it quite clearly sometimes. Now, here we're putting up the walls. Actually, they're called wall kits, but you can actually use windows, which start with the wall kit, and then you put iron and then glass, which... Now these are not as strong as the reinforced ones, and I don't think they're as strong as the steel ones, I might be wrong. They all look different as well, so they've all got their own um, textures, I guess. But this is a, a fairly standard kind of a greenhouse, which is kind of important as well. Because, well, you can either use grow lights, which use power, which... Well, at the moment, that's a problem, but once I get a battery, station battery, a big battery, that is, is you, you'll see. Once you get one of them, as long as you've got the power inputs, you can run whatever you want. But why would you bother when you've got the free sun right there? Like, that doesn't make any sense to me. Now, that might not be the case on Venus or Vulcan, where the sun is extremely, extremely, extremely hot. More, much more so than the grow lights will be. Um, you, 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 you'd rather not have the windows and access to the sun for the plants because it will cook your base. So, there's obviously times when re the, re the, glow ha the grow lights are much more... Um, viable as an option, let's say. Yeah, looking at how bad the the batteries are, I think it's time to go for a bit of a, a mine, I guess. Not too far away, just to, like, enough to let the batteries charge, I think, is the option here. Now, sometimes it's a good idea not to mine too close to the base because there's a mining robot called Amy that comes along later and the more ore you have close to your base, the more she will access. But you can take that with a pinch of salt because there's various other ways to get mines. And I realize I've actually left 
the mining drill back up at base, which is um, a pain. And when that happens, you've got no choice. This is what I was saying earlier about inventory management um, and forgetting tools. Like, you literally can waste half a day traveling out to the mining site and realizing you forgot your mining drill. And then it's a really long trek back home. And this is the kind of thing that I'd probably be cutting out in the future. Um, I might say, I've got to the mining site and I've forgotten the mining drill. I'm going to have to go back now. Cut. And then it would come back here and be like, where did I put it? It's not there. Oh yeah, that's right. I dropped it in the airlock because I, didn't ha I only have two hands. And rather than take the few seconds to drag it into the mining belt, I thought it'd be faster to drop it on the floor. And it would have been had I remembered to pick the damn thing up afterwards. But because I didn't, I've now got to trek all the way up the hill, wasting jetpack fuel, and all the way down the hill again, wasting time. Yeah. So I might actually just speed this bit up because... Well, you've seen mining before, you've seen how to use the ore scanner and the tablet, so there's nothing much you haven't seen here before, and I mean, except for to get an idea of how long things take in the game, which, you know, if you're interested in playing the game by now, you'd know, and if you're not, then you'll also know. I, I'm, I, if you're interested in, in hearing the rest of the story, that's more important than watching the mining, so I'm probably going to fast forward, I'm, I'm, I'm fast forwarding this, I guess, as you're watching. Hydration critical. So yeah, that sound there is usually the sign that um, it's time to start heading home. I mean, even if you don't get home straight away, it's definitely time to start heading that direction. I think here I stop a few times on the way to pick up a few more ores that just happen to be lying at the surface because I'm already passing them. Um, but yeah, I, I've got plenty of time. I know where my base is. I'm not. I'm not in a hurry at this stage. Let's say. So um, I, I didn't stop too much because, well lights fading um, there's stuff that me is doing I could be swapping solar panels around but I didn't bother wasting my energy but I do want to get on with smelting some ores because very necessary to get that done really no two ways about it Okay, so now we're going for an ice crusher, and I got distracted at this moment, so um, I was not thinking about the ice crusher while talking to the person who came into the room at the time, and um, trying, well, kind of trying to focus and, and play and talk at the same time, which just didn't work some some so for some reason like I, I can't imagine why it's like it's not like station is a very uh, challenging game mentally so I ended up printing three ice crushers which is fine because we will actually get around to using them eventually Now it looks like I've run out of power. I didn't even realize I'd run out of power. Um, obviously I'm getting in as much um, time outdoors as I can before needing to move indoors because I know very much so that the alarm is telling me that I need to go in and, and get hydrated. Yeah, still actually quite difficult to get past that part of the 
the locker room for some that lockers for some reason. It just it just doesn't seem easy. go inside and get a drink and turn off the other printer that you're not using. Yeah, definitely moving now because uh, water is too low, so hydration is too low, so it's a case of do or die really. the oxygen into the room, open the helmet, take a drink, the usual fun stuff. I can't wait to get that room finished because right now I'm wrestling with this thing every single time I need to fill up the tank. Then I think, sod it. <laughs> the quicker I get the room sorted, the better. And I've got four megapascals is actually not too bad, so... I've got plenty of time yet, why am I worried? I obviously left all them printers on and didn't even realise it. Now there is a way around that, that's making a transformer for the entire room. It's a good idea to do that when you have the resources and time. Um, you can just turn everything on and off. So at this point I've realised, well... The room's still open to the atmosphere, so there's no point worrying about this being here. It needs to go anyway. I wish there was a way to, like, click on something and it puts it in either a tool slot or a backpack slot so you just hold I don't know hold, shift and click and it'll look for a tool slot if it's a tool or a backpack slot otherwise and just use a slot and vice versa if you click it from the backpack it'll put it into your hand I find in my mind that would be really useful uh, so, air tank critical. might as well fill up the air tank while we're here now. So now it's time to fill the windows, and as I'm passing, I decide to carry on with smelting some more. Now, obviously, with windows, you let the light in, but you keep the atmosphere separated. It will mean the room heats up and it will need cooling eventually. Sometimes they can be fiddly, so it's always best to move to a corner. Now I realise that the roof needs to be done. And before the roof needs to be done, it's a good idea. Ah, he's noticed the printers <laughs> at last. Before the roof can be done, it's time to put the crates in because it's easier to drop them in through the roof than it is to try and squeeze them through the door. So, mm, well, we're going to be basically unloading the lander, or trying to. So I might skip, not skip, I might fast forward some of this because you've seen this all before and it's just flying up the mountain. Now, there is a wee bit of a technique to this by looking slightly towards the ground and knowing kind of where you're going. But generally, 
if you've got a little bit of an idea of what direction you're in, then you're fine. Uh, by the power of editing, we can very quickly get up and down the hill. But I'm not fast forwarding this bit because, um, well, the silly station here lost his bearings, which, yeah, it isn't very good when you're trying to find something in the dark. So, I run around for a bit going, hmm, where's this lander? And I go, well, I'm going to have to wait till morning to find it. I'm, I'm wasting time running around and the more I run in circles, the the more time I'm wasting, so... Oh look, there's some ore. I know I have a very full mining belt, but can't hurt to, to fill it to the brim, surely. So, mining at night is usually actually a bad idea because it's a waste of time. But in this case, when I've got about three minutes before the sunrise in real time, wasting time is exactly what we want. So at this point, I can see the dawn on the horizon just creeping up over the mountains and you see the silhouette there of my base on the top of that hill that's what i mean about being able to see it from miles around this exact moment is why i build on the top of a mountain not always in every situation but genuinely it, it's a good idea now i'm also trying to find the lander at this stage and burning jetpack fuel <laughs> flying around when I could be doing the jump but um, no at least I'm getting a, an inventory of the ores that are closest to me which is never a bad idea really and there's a land where I can see its silhouette so back to the top of the hill we go So currently, the base is only really able to be seen from the side that we're looking at now, kind of thing, and to the left and to the right of there. So the south, the east, and the west to the north. It's kind of occluded by the the, the hillside, which it kind of it, it, we we will have to build up and then and put a, a beacon or a light on top. Now, beacons can be seen from further away, which is a good thing, uh, and even through in the terrain despawns, but uh, they, they require a lot of power and the battery powered ones uh, uh, the battery doesn't really last forever so and you got to remember to change the battery and you got to remember to turn it on before you leave and yeah, it's just all sorts of no now the GPS system is better, I, I, I leave it way too late to build one of them uh, unfortunately, but I do get around to it, so I think at this point I'm going, well, it's still daylight, so I'm going to get a bit of mining in uh, while, while I can. Now, although this is right next to the lander, I'm kind of questioning whether that's the best place to be doing it, but hey, look, it's there, I'm down the hill. I'm also thinking that I'm probably going to unload it in the locker when I get back to the top of the hill, so I might as well fill it up and then forget to actually do the unloading <laughs> part of it. But you start things with great intention and then forget to actually carry through to the end. Some people might make notes to prompt or remind themselves. Uh, I am not adverse to putting in a sign at the door to tell me to remember to I hydrate, change my oxygen, put the beacon on, empty my mining stuff, all that kind of thing. If I'm forgetting something particularly in a walkthrough that it's getting on my nerves, I will actually do that. So, and I've decided I'm going to go back to the hole and pick up a little bit more of the coal that I left lying about. And... Again, using the wonderful power of editing, we can just power on through all of this um, boring stuff, which I think this game's definitely more suited to uh, editing than, than, a, than a let's play, let's say. That rhymes. 
I'm a poet and I didn't know it. So, back to the top of the hill we go with our crate. And it had to happen eventually. These crates can be very fiddly. Um, I'd say maybe even to the point of being a bit buggy at times. But they used to be deadly. Like one of these things could smack you in the face and and the, uh, the gas um, water containers could easily smack someone in the face and wipe a, st a stationer off the face of the planet that they're on. Or asteroid for that matter. So, with all of them in, it's time to seal up the roof. And our room will be complete. Which is brilliant, because now we've got a space where we can build various things that we're going to need for the future. Now, this is not the living quarters for everything forever, but... It'll do for a while. So hit R to open the inventory of whatever you're holding. There it says it's a room. We're happy. So um, I will be sorting out the atmosphere in there eventually. But for now, let's stop that annoying noise and get a drink. Because we've earned it. The biggest need now, apart from materials to build things, because that's always going to be in need, is water. We need to get a way of filling our water bottles before we run out, which mm, we're not looking too bad at the moment, but it, 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 we need to get onto it uh, sooner rather than later, so. And, okay, I've got a bit of iron, but. Still, before it goes dark, I think it's a good time to go out and, and do some more mining. So let's. Uh, we haven't got much in the what in them blocks there, and we can't put ice away without it melting. So we keep them in the inventory for now. And yeah, looking at the sun, it's about to go down. So let's go do some mining. Except. Um, well, that looks nice, but where is the miner? <laughs> and, ah, this wouldn't be the first time. But, as you can see, the sun sets earlier, lower down. It's still a bit light up here, and you've even got a shadow. That that will be giving some power to solar panels when, they're, when you've got the right ones. So it's just, it goes to show just how much of a difference. And it's like, where did I put that miner? There! Was it in my tools the whole time? It might have been. Oops! This is why inventory management is very important. Because you might die with something in your pocket. I've actually done that in the beginning when I didn't realise that there was a water bottle in the uniform. Uh, I think it was the very first time I played. I, I ran out of water and I had some sitting in my uniform. How embarrassing. Now, there's little wonder why I keep running out of power, because I've been leaving the arc furnace switched on the whole time. There you go, finally turned it off. That's just something to try and remember if you're playing the game. It's just turn the machines off after you, save a little bit of power. Right, now we have everything we need for another door. That's going to be for the internal door of the airlock closest to the room now I don't really I I, I realize that I kind of made that room actually a, the airlock uh, or the room a bit weird it only really needs two doors but ah, look it's done now and I'm not about to go back and change it so uh, maybe a lesson learned for the next series or playthrough or whatever 
Um, but it gives us an extra layer of protection anyway, so... Um, on to the ice crusher, which will be necessary for water. Um, inventory management, always important. Now we're going to need some pipes, which is going to require iron. Which we already have in the machine, which is brilliant. Now I try not to, to juggle between the machines too much if I can avoid it, because it just wastes time. But sometimes that is completely unavoidable, there's not much you can do. So, you just have to live with it. Now, I don't want too many pipes at this stage, we're still very low on water, but we need silicon. Now, I'm wondering, do where do I have silicon? I have some silicon right there in my bag. Or mining belt, as it sh should I say. So, we'll stick that in there, and while we're waiting, we'll, um, yeet that into there. I, I, we could have actually gone and put them in, but... That's enough, no. And silicon does take longer than most things. It's very, um, it's a, a higher temperature to melt than most things, so it takes longer in the arc furnace than most things. So, stopping and starting will spit out what's done. That should be enough, and away we go, making a water bottle filler, which will go with the tank and the water quite nicely. Oh, now he decides to go and fiddle around with pipes. Now again, you need a wrench to you to put pipes onto existing pipe networks, but you don't need a wrench to put pipes in without as they like just as they are like. And sometimes the best place to, to store things in this game is on the floor. Because you'll be back in a minute, and there's no point clicking and dragging to your inventory, so you might as well just put it there. And here's the point where we need to splice, so we definitely need the wire cutters in hand. And I think now we just need a bit of ice, which we happen to have in the hand. And there we go. Now, thankfully, since uh, I think one of the recent patches, the liquid that comes out of the ice crusher is actually above zero degrees, so up until very recently, you had to then get a pipe heater put the pipe heater onto the pipe and then you'd get some water in your bottles which added a bit of time onto the whole process and energy requirements which playing on this difficulty doesn't seem that bad sorry playing on easy difficulty versus this difficulty doesn't seem that bad but as you can see we were down to the last frames of the bottles and even with that little bit of ice there we, we, we still need more so that's on the list of things to get while out and about. And turn off the... Thank you. <laughs> uh, always try and remember to turn off your machines and save a bit of power. Okay, so taking stock. Now I'm off looking for the batteries because... Well... You always want to know where your batteries are. At <laughs> the beginning, especially when you haven't got much power. Also thinking about what other things I need, I could be using or doing at this point, like putting in a hydroponics kit. There may have been something else I was looking for as well, but. As you can see, the crate's kind of bugging out there on the ceiling, so we fixed that problem. 
stick the other battery into the charger. File away the pipes. And that seems like a good place to leave this episode with the sun rising over our base on Mars. So, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.